Okay, word of warning. I just had a great vacation. You know, one of the rare trips where nothing major goes wrong, everything works out the way you planned it, you managed to find two babyless planes for the round trip, and sure, that's good, but when your job requires you to be angry, a vacation that's too relaxing can be an occupational hazard. I'm, I'm just not that pissed today. And that's actually been a real problem for me over the last couple of years. More and more often when I sit down to write the diatribe for the week, I find myself scanning my memory banks, trying to remember some notable time in the past that religion pissed me off. Because in a weird way, being pissed off at religion for a living has insulated me from all the things about religion that used to piss me off. Right. First of all, I, I, I don't go to work anymore. Right. I, I get to work from home which means that I don't hear people casually discussing how good conversion therapy worked for their ex-gay cousin in the elevator. Right? I don't see people praying over their vending machine Cheez-Its in the break room. Hell, I've made it through two Ash Wednesdays in a row without seeing anybody with a weird fucked up shit smear on their forehead. I see fewer people, which means I see fewer religious people. And what's more, the people I do see on a regular basis are all atheists. Yeah, I work with Heath, Eli, Lucinda, Andrew, Anna, and Morgan. That's at least half of my human interactions in a given week, and you're not going to find a Baptist on that list. What's more, basically all my friends are rationalists and atheists as well. You know, many of my religious friends disavowed me over my shameless Obama support, and after five years of podcasting, most of the friends I've replaced them with are people I've met through the atheist podcasting community. Even my social media pages are self-selected for atheism, so shy of the occasional tag somebody puts up in hopes I'll smack down their Aunt Kathy's God Needed More Angels posts. I don't really see the religious shit online that much unless I go looking for it. But it's not just the ever more homogeneous social circle. You know, when we started the show, I lived in New York City, which, despite having a pretty healthy dose of atheists and committed secularists, also has a shit ton of every wacky religion the world has to offer. So, sure, you can wear your atheism t-shirt without getting lynched, but you're also going to meet people from the moon temple of perpetual patchouli odor every third time you leave your apartment, too. And, and, and of course, from there, I, I retreated to South Georgia, where the only way to walk a mile without seeing Christian propaganda was somnambulism. But now, I'm, I'm tucked away in secret layer, where... I mean, you know, there, there, there may, may be some Amish people around here somewhere, but nobody's showing up at my door with pamphlets about my posthumous subterranean itinerary anymore. What's more, I'm a dude. I'm a white dude. I'm a white, cis, straight dude. At best, my atheism puts me at number six on the evangelical demographic hit list, and then that's if you count brown people as just one big category. And sure, there are government actors trying to subvert the rights of non-believers. You know, the Supreme Court wants to give money to religious schools, and Betsy DeVos is more than willing to oblige, but nobody's trying to shut down my primary health clinic. Nobody's trying to nullify my marriage or forbid me from taking a shit in public or, or ban people like me from entering the country. I, I'm as insulated as a non-Christian can be in this burgeoning theocracy. I mean, shit, I'm a job creator, so that might even balance out my atheism to most evangelicals. So yeah, uh, a couple more vacations like the one I just had, and I might be in danger of losing my edge altogether. I might wind up coming out here one week doing a whole diatribe about how shitty the signage is at the uh, Denver International Airport. But luckily, the very source of the problem offers up its own solution. Because I don't have religious shitty coworkers to piss me off anymore, and I don't have religious neighbors everywhere to stoke my ire. But I do have tens of thousands of people to be pissed off for. See, my anger is far more often vicarious these days, but if anything, that just makes it more potent than it was before. See, if it wasn't for this show, I probably wouldn't know any active duty trans people, for example, when Trump decided to throw him to the evangelical wolves to distract from his scandal du jour. And, and then I would be limited to the motivations offered up by simple, empathetic concern from my fellow human beings. But now that's multiplied by the very real concern of, well, then what the fuck happens to Alice and Joanna, you miserable asshole? I mean, it, it doesn't take much to get pissed off about gay conversion therapy, but, but nothing does the trick quite like hearing from a person who's gone through it. You can discern all the dangers of telling kids that they're going to go to hell for touching their genitals just through thought experiment alone, but you're never going to reach the kind of outrage you get when you meet people who clawed their way out of their hell fears in their 40s. And, and I don't know that there's any way to get your head around the, the, what it's like to grow up in one of those weird ultra-religious sects without actually talking to the people who have been through it and being able to ask them questions. Look, I'll admit that in the beginning, this was much more of a selfish endeavor. I was drowning in my own profane tirades and I needed a flood valve to open. But in a counterintuitive way, the more I get out of the podcast, the less selfish it becomes. 
because even though the show started because I needed somebody to vent to, it's long turned into something I do because there are so many people I need to vent for. All the previously theoretical victims are now tangible friends, and their memories should be more than enough to fuel my rage for another generation or two.